College Place is a video library of noteworthy presentations, panel discussions, and lectures featuring guest speakers and faculty members taped at one of the Milwaukee Area Technical College's four southeastern Wisconsin campuses. These are produced by students in the college's associate's degree program in television video production in coordination with Milwaukee Public Television. Thank you, George Stone. I'm humbled to share this microphone, this podium with you, and also Clay and Jeff, just wonderful. I always learn so much when I come to this conference from people out there in the business world, investors, and people out there, a company like Johnson Controls, to do that kind of important work and to show how companies can profit from energy efficiency, how it works, is, is just great. It's a great learning experience for me. I've been coming here for a while to Milwaukee for green events. I've been at this event before and met George before. What he's doing as a scientist, as a geologist, as a man who's talking about climate change and very real problems that we face every day, uh, you know, I'm just honored to know him and call him a friend. It's a great thing that you do here every year. I'm going to talk about my journey since 1970, how I got involved with all this green stuff, how I got to be known as the green guy in Hollywood. I was born at Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital in 1949, and that's where the story starts, really. In, in the 1940s, late 1940s, I was born and lived the 50s and the 60s in L.A. So some of you might be able to surmise where I'm headed with this, what I went through in the 50s and 60s living in L.A. as a young person. Smog, horrible, choking smog. Really, really bad. You couldn't see from here to the other side of the room many days a year. And it wasn't just haze and fog. You know, we have that occasionally due to meteorological conditions. I'm talking about smog and heavy on the SM and, uh, and light on the OG of the, the fog part of it. It was very, very bad. So, uh, you know, I lived with it for 20 years, and I complained about it to my dad. And my dad was a great guy. He was a conservative Republican, and I am not, but we had so much in common. We agreed on so many things because he was a conservative who liked to conserve. He turned off the lights and he turned off the water and he saved string and saved tinfoil and he cared about the environment. I don't think he ever used the word environmentalist, but he was one. He got me involved in Boy Scouts. I saw nature up close and personal. And the most important thing he ever said to me when I started complaining about the smog in the 50s and 60s is, Eddie, I know, what you're, uh, I know that you're against smog. I'm, I don't like it either. But what are you for? What is your answer? What are you going to do about it? And so in 1970, he died a few days before the first Earth Day. And I got involved in the first Earth Day. And I got involved because of the wonderful Gaylord Nelson from this state. I got involved because of Aldo Leopold from this state. I got involved because of John Muir from this state and your wonderful uh, you know, leaders like that, but also because of my dad. You know, I wanted to do something to honor him as well as those other factors. And so I got involved in 1970. And I'm going to tell you a minute what I did, but I'm going to tell you first what I didn't do. I didn't go broke buying 1970 panels I couldn't afford. I was always very careful with my money. I was a broken, struggling actor then, and I didn't have my father to rely on anymore. I had to make my own way. And so I had to do stuff that was inexpensive, that I knew would be good for the environment, and I hope would eventually, over time, save me money. Well, what I did in 1970 was I started recycling, I started composting, I started buying all biodegradable soaps and detergents, I changed my diet to eat lower in the food chain, and that was cheaper. I even bought an electric car in 1970, George. A lot of people think I'm making that one up. You didn't buy an electric car in 1970. They didn't have them back then. Of course, they did. Henry Ford's wife preferred her Baker Electric to his noisy contraption. And uh, I couldn't afford a fancy collector's item car like that. My friend, Jay, my friend Jay Leno has one. I rode in it, but I couldn't afford anything like that. But I could afford a Taylor Dunn electric car. You can look any of this up in case you think I'm making it up. I could be, but I'm not. <laughs> Taylor dash D-U-N-N-E. They still make electric cars today. When I say car, I'm being quite grand, George. We're talking about a golf cart with a windshield wiper and a horn, OK? <laughs> It didn't have a steering wheel. It had a tiller. <laughs> I actually took a young lady, a young actress, on a date in that electric car. She did not grant me a second date. <laughs> it was very slow. It was actually of 
Milwaukee, fictional Milwaukee fame. It was uh, Shirley from Laverne and Shirley I took on a date. <laughs> Cindy Williams. I took Cindy Williams on a date. And I think when a kid went past us on Hot Wheels giving us a finger, I think uh, <laughs> she decided there wouldn't be a second date. No, but we're good friends and we're, uh, she thought it was funny and so did I. It was a very slow vehicle, but it got me around. No, no back seat, exactly, no back seat. So any uh, options I had in my mind, any delusions I had were quickly dashed. And so, uh, you know, but I rode that car and it was fine for going to get the week's worth of groceries and going to, you know, uh, do the laundry and that stuff. Because back then, all this stuff I did, the recycling, the composting, the diet, I, I started riding my bike to get around even more. I took public transportation. This electric car afforded me another opportunity in the rain or pick you up a week's worth of groceries, as I said, and it was a, a good car, and it cost me $950. Not a bad price for a car in 1970. It was an okay price for a car, but what I quickly learned was, as you were alluding to, Jeff, the, the wonderful positive things of doing this kinds of thing, it was cheaper to plug it in the wall than it was to buy 1970 gasoline. The same way it is today, by the way. It's cheaper today to plug an electric car in the wall and go 20 miles or 30 miles or 100 miles by plugging it in, it's just cheaper to fuel it than it is to buy 2012 gasoline. So I like that, and I quickly surmised having it a, a while, it was much cheaper to maintain. There was no tune-up or oil change or fan belt or radiator flush or smog check or valve job. I didn't have any of those expensive. I went, I like this green stuff. And so I kept doing more. Pretty soon I had saved enough money from that low-hanging fruit of the recycling and the bus riding and the you know, public transportation and the, you know, the uh, you know, riding my bike and all that stuff. I had extra money in my pocket, so I bought a little solar oven to cook some of my meals. My natural gas bill went down some more. I got a rain barrel to collect some rainwater, and my water bill went down. I was growing some fruits and vegetables, and I saved some money on that, of course, you know. Uh, you know, I finally could afford some attic insulation. After 15 years of doing it, by 1985, I could finally then afford solar. Not solar electric, that was still out of reach for me in 1985. I bought solar hot water. Wonderful system, not quite as good as what A.O. Smith makes today, but it was a 1985 system. It's still working to this day. I don't live in that house, but I know the people who do. That solar still working? Yeah, it's working great. 27 years later. 27 years later, still making hot water. By 19, 1985, that same year, I bought a wind turbine. People say wind doesn't work, and there's lots of problems with that. I bought a wind turbine in 1985. Boy, it was a big wind turbine, so we thought back then. It was 75 kilowatts. Ooh. You know, now they're a megawatt and a half. The people who know about wind know what they are today and have been for years. But 1985, that's a nice size wind turbine, 75 kilowatts. And I bought, a, bought that wind turbine, part of a wind farm. It's not at my house. It's at a wind farm somewhere. I'm still getting checks and still have the bragging rights to say that I'm not just carbon neutral, I'm carbon negative since 1985 from that one single investment from that wind turbine and still getting money. How's that for a good investment, Jeff? <laughs> doing well by doing good. I can't imagine a better way to do things. And that's the way I've been doing it. I've talked about some of this stuff on a show, by the way. I had a show called Living With Ed. Did anybody see that show, Living With Ed? Okay, a few of you have seen it, thank you. It was a nice show on Home and Garden and on Planet Green. For those of you who didn't see it, it was a show that illustrated uh, my wife and I together in a very unusual Hollywood relationship. We're the only Hollywood couple I know of that has a prenup that involves carbon cre credits. So, <laughs> she was supposed to be here today. She's a little upset with me. I made her a very nice organic gift for her birthday, but apparently, I guess it was a little too organic. Um, I found some old rope in the garage and I made her some hemp underwear and um, <laughs> I think it might have been uncomfortable. But she's a great lady and I kid her a lot. We have a lot of fun and that was a great thing about this show for years. I got to do all this stuff I've been doing since 1970 and illustrated on the show and I had had environmental shows before that sadly nobody watched you know, because it was minus Rochelle, if you will. I, I was a single man when I did this show called Today's Environment in the 90s. It was on 4 a.m. Uh, in the L.A. market. <laughs> I never saw my own show myself. I literally never saw it. It was on Discovery Channel, the mid-90s, Today's Environment, but it was very factual and sweet and nice, but it didn't have that angle. When I started doing the show with my wife saying, what are you doing with that rain barrel? What are you, crazy? It's ugly. I go, what's ugly? The fish flopping in the mud up at the Sacramento Bay Delta? 
What's ugly? The people wearing masks in Owens Valley were stealing the water and they have dust storms there. And so we got into some of those issues there with information and entertainment, you know, infotainment, if you will. And uh, people got engaged and people started doing these things and emailing me and writing me and, and coming up to me in the street and saying, I got one of those solar ovens and I love how it keeps the pot steady because it's on the little hinge thing and on the little, and it, the, it's got a little temperature, you know, a gauge on it. And, and you realize, wow, they actually did get one. They have a level of detail about the solar oven or the rain barrel. You go, they actually are doing these things because of this crazy show with a million people we're watching every week, and that made me so happy, it made me happier than any other acting job. So I started doing this stuff since 1970. I finally did in uh, 1990, I put up solar electric on my house. Uh, I bought the house I'm now in in 88 and did all the cheap and easy stuff there right away, and then uh, after a short time, put up solar electric on my house. And when I put it up, they said, Ed, because there were no tax credits for solar back in 1990, they said, Ed, you will never get your money back from this. Ever? No, never. What, never, ever? Well, maybe, like, it's going to take you like 18 years, you know, because, you know, you just, you pay cash for it. It's going to take, well, that day has come and gone. That was 2008, so now I'm into profit and still working just great. And I can retire now. I'm an actor who's been working since 1967. And I could retire now, not because I have a lot of money saved. I've saved some money, but... Uh, you know, I'm a kind of a, a character actor, if you will. I'm not a leading man, so I never had those big salaries, but a fine, very fine, very, I'm very happy with my salary over the years. But what I did was I, I put a lot of that money into all these green technologies. I can retire now because I don't have any bills. <laughs> having money is great. I'm not, I have nothing against having money. What's as good as having money? Not needing money. <laughs> That's as good for me. Having super low bills. Why, what I mean by that? I heat most of my water with the sun. You know, I have a wonderful A.O. Smith uh, Vertex 100 water heater for when it's, you know, cloudy sometimes, you need a boost and what have you. And the heating for the house also with the Vertex, you know, gives you heat, you know, radiant heating for the house, the same one unit. I used to have two flames in the basement, one for the forced air heating and one for the water heater booster for my solar. And I got one because of that wonderful equipment. So I, all my hot water comes from the sun or very little, very few BTUs. You know, I have energy-saving thermostat, uh, compact fluorescent bulbs, uh, and now LED bulbs and all that kind of stuff. I'm growing a lot of my food on site. I'm collecting my rainwater in a 550-gallon barrel, as well as the rain barrels under the downspouts. Uh, I, the gas prices have gone up, and I'm sorry for that for everybody. And, and, uh, perhaps me, about 30 days a year, I drive the, the hybrid around, but the rest of the time I'm getting around on my electric car that I charge on the sun. Uh, all my bills are super low because of all these green choices I made. And think of what we can do as a nation, how we can really reduce our demand with Johnson Controls, the kinds of stuff that they can do that can make homes and office buildings more efficient. We can do a lot. And now, I can't see out there, I don't know if TMZ is here, but if they are, I'm going to tell a story that's not going to reflect well on me. But like everything I've said today, it's a true story, and, and here we go. This is 2008. In 2008, I had had this show on called uh, Living with Ed. It had been on a full year. I had a book out, the first book I wrote, a smaller book than what's out there, called Living Like Ed. And what's the TV show and the book both about? Energy efficiency. That's what, that's what they're both about for me. So I have a book and a TV show out, one full year about energy efficiency. And I got a call from Ron and Tammy Schwalski. They're green real estate agents, and I really don't have time for them this day. I'm on the run. I say, guys, I'm not buying or selling any property. You got to go. Love you. No, 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 Ed, one second. Wait, wait. We, we got a new line of work. What, what's that? What are you doing now? We, we have, uh, we're doing home energy audits. I go, well, I'll take a second for that uh, because I got some Hollywood friends that could really use your help. We'll send out an email blast, and we'll get some of these people to do a home energy audit because they have waste. I've been to their homes. They need some help. They don't have the kind of stuff I do. So, well, that's, that's great. We want to do that. That's wonderful. That's what we'd, we hoped you'd say. But we all, before you go, we'd also like to come and do your house. You want to do my house? Why do you want to do my house? 
I have energy efficient lighting. I blew cellulose in the walls. It's an old 1936 house, but when I moved in 88, I did all the cheap and easy stuff right away and quickly moved up to solar by 1990, solar electric. And I, I did it all within just a few years. It was as good as you're gonna make a house. You know, Recycled denim in the attic, cellulose in the walls, double pane, pane windows, energy saving thermostat, you know, weather stripping I put up myself. I said, you got, you, you know, they said, well, we'd like to do it anyway. Maybe we'll find a few things. And to be honest, Ed, it'd help us if we could say we did your house. It would really help us get more clients. He said, why didn't you just say that? Okay, if it's going to help you guys to come and do an energy audit in my house, come on, when do you want to come? Wednesday? They come by Wednesday. I said, I get it. This is going to be great. It's going to be like a bodybuilding ad, you know, because you have the 90 pound weakling beforehand that's got the, you know, that's the energy inefficient home like I used to have. This house was before I moved in. And then you got the buff kind of, you know, what I have now. You got this wonderful energy efficient kind of a home after. I'll be the after of before and after. And when, yeah, probably. I said, what, what's all this stuff though? What's this equipment? And they go, when did you last have a home energy audit? And I go, wow. You know, it's it was 1988. And what kind of an audit was it? I said, well, they had a clipboard. I said, oh, they did a clipboard audit. <laughs> well, those are fine. Those are very good. But um, I said, they told me, you know, you know, whatever they would tell you to do, I've done all this stuff anyway, and I've written about it in the book. So I said, well, but nowadays we have these tools. I go, what the hell is this stuff? And they go, this is called a thermal imaging device, otherwise known as an infrared camera. Great, well, you'll see in the walls, I blew cellulose in and you know, recycled denim in the attic and I put up the weather, good, good. What's that thing? That's called a duct blaster. You put it on the air ducts and it tests, you know, it forces air and sees if it leaks. I said, put that back in the truck. I, I just had new ducts put in from the 1970s air duct system the previous owner had. There was some mold in it or something. I'm sure they sealed it up good. Well, let's just make sure. Uh, what's this thing? Big red thing with a fan in the middle. What the heck is that? That's called a blower door, Ed. We'll put that on your front door, the force air into the house, and we'll see how you do it. I said, good. I'm going to get some lunch. I'll come back to see my A-plus energy-efficient house. <laughs> so come back in a couple hours. So how did I do? We're talking A-plus. I better not be an A-minus. No, you did not get an A-minus. I said, that's great. You got a C-plus. <laughs> What are you talking about? Here's my electric bill, my natural gas bill. I have the lowest, the lowest bills, and this is before the vertex, by the way. I have the lowest bills you could ever imagine. Uh, they said, yeah, because you've got a 1,600 square foot house and you've got six kilowatts of solar on your roof, but your, your house is running faster to just stay in place. It's an energy sieve. I go, what the hell are you talking about? Only I didn't say hell. I said another word. And, and, and so they said, let's look at the videotape. And there it was in the videotape. There's diagonal pieces of wood. None of the insulators in 1988 defrauded me. They did good work. They didn't have the thermal imaging device. Diagonal piece of wood, no cellulose below that. They knew to do it above and below the fire block. They were good insulators. But there's a diagonal they didn't know about. There was other things we did. Recycled denim in the attic. Big, thick bats. Wonderful. But they didn't get up there and put other cellulose in the kind of coving that they had, this kind of curved area. Big gaps there. So they, they went and did all this stuff, put an A.O. Smith vertex, uh, you know, 96% thermal efficiency vertex. And it, uh, instead of having two flames in the basement, one for the forced air heating and one for the uh, heating the water to boost the water, I had one flame. All this stuff, I did all the stuff that they said in the audit, and my natural gas bill went to half of what it was. My electric bill, as low as it was, went to half of what it was. They found in the wall there was a gap you could fit several phone books through going from inside my house to outside that I, we just didn't know about. That was fixed with a $10 piece of insulation, a little piece of insulation they put up. I never saw it. I never knew it was there. It was in this remodel the previous owner had done, an area that you would never see in a million years without the tools. Think of what we could do as a nation if every home in America did all this stuff that it got a home energy audit and did everything that they could with robust state and federal subsidies to help them do that stuff. There's a big prize here. There's $350 billion a year that leaves this country in imported oil. Now when you're talking about plug-in hybrids, a Chevy Volt, these other cars that plug in, 
You know, it used to be they say, well, okay, you're saving energy on that, but that's not going to affect what we need. We need that foreign oil to drive our cars with. Not anymore, we don't. Not anymore. You're saving energy and electricity on your house. You can go 90% of your driving that electric and that Chevy Volt and what have you. These are the kinds of things we can do today. So uh, I'm, I'm just so encouraged by what I've heard here today and the stuff I, uh, I know that we can do that I've seen firsthand. Everything that I've done for the environment has been good for my for the environment, but it's also been good for my bottom line. And we can prove time and time again, as Jeff has seen evidence of, that this is a bottom line issue, that we can save money. $350 billion a year leaving the country. That can be slowed down and stopped by doing the right order. Energy efficiency right away. They cut, in this Congress, they cut the weatherization assistance program of, of all things. WAP. It was $1,500 per household to weatherize to help people get insulation and get an energy audit, do those kinds of things. They cut it to 750. I, I can't imagine what they're thinking. That's the kind of stuff that should be maintained or increased with this prize of $350 billion that, you know, for energy uh, that we're spending from offshore. We can make a big difference with technology that exists today. Fuel cells, keep working on them. Wonderful. Hydrogen powered vehicles, fantastic, hope it happens. But what do we have today? We have equipment today with the Chevy Volt and these other cars and Nissan Leaf and Johnson Controls and A.O. Smith water heaters and A.O. Smith solar and this stuff. Companies, American companies today doing things that can keep that money here, lessen our dependence on foreign oil, clean up the air in our cities and put money in our pockets. Anybody else want to do that? I want to say I'm also humbled to be here with Michael Mann. We're going to be part of a, uh, an event later, I think, a panel or something. Fourth Street. Fourth Street, yes, the Fourth Street thing we're going to do. So I'm very honored to be with him. He's a wonderful scientist, as is George, giving you good information about climate change, if you have an interest in that. And, uh, and Mark uh, Chandler is here as well. Uh, wonderful people. Mark is from NASA. So make sure you meet all these people. Meet the people that are doing here every day, like the people at A.O. Smith and uh, my friend Clay at Johnson Controls and Jeff, who's out there in the invest investment community. Make sure you meet all of them. There's books available, too. We'll do that. But I think we, I hope we have time for questions still. Yes, I hope sir. I didn't go on too long. George Stone, my dear friend. Thank you, George. Great job.